Hey, my name is Brian. Welcome to My Garage Bible Study. We're gonna have fun stuff today. Yes, we are. I have a, a new devotional that is out right now. You can go to amazon.com or bookstores near you and, and go ahead and grab one. This is the stuff that I talk about most frequently with guys around campfires, on my back deck, or wherever I am. We're actually finding a lot of women actually find the uh, lessons very, very helpful for it. It's straight from the Bible stuff. I'm gonna do it today, although I don't know what I'm going to do today. A little tension, oh no, oh no. I've done zero preparation today, zero, zero. This is the, this is the devotion. You can get it right now. And if you buy, you can also follow on my podcast I have coming up. We're going to do some of the, do a reading or two. This is 22% new content from a similar work I did a while ago. 70 individual things. I talk about these things over and over. I've done zero preparation for today other than I did write this book, you know, over the last several years. We're going to have something fun today. We're going to have Bible roulette. I've done Bible roulette before. We're going to do Bible actually in the devotional, which is all on scripture verses. Here's the way we're going to do it. So let's say, let's say we divide, divide this up in the first half. The first half of the book will be this, and the second half will be about this. And it's going to be utterly random. Just so you know, I'm not planning on it. We're going to flip my can of chew here. This is for first half of the book. This is for second half of the book. Let's see what happens here. If it comes up, whatever lands right here, it goes like this. Okay, second half of the book. So here we go. We come to the second half, we go la, 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 right there. Okay, what do we have here? Oh, this will be interesting. Entry 56, a back that's strong. Here's the Bible verse says. 1 Peter 5, 7. Cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. <laughs> I'm told that sometimes I break out in song on Garage Bible Study for, for no apparent reason and always out of tune. And there is one that, gosh, I, I, I did a lot of churchy stuff in my day, a lot of churchy stuff. And there was this Old song, churches used to teach their little kids. Maybe they still do or not. It's, it's based on this verse. And if you want to memorize a verse, we never memorize a verse here on Garage Bible Study, but you're going to memorize this one. Cast your anxieties on him because he cares for you. It goes like this. Cast your burdens unto Jesus. He cares for you. Cast your burdens unto Jesus. He cares for you. Cast your anxieties on Jesus. Do you recognize that right now we are the most medicated culture in the history of the world. One out of four Americans is on anxiety medication. Now let me tell you, I am pro-meds, I am. I am pro-understanding that there are neurochemical things that can be off and I love science and I love medication under the right thing, I, I really do. So let me just say that real, really clearly. And let me also say, there's no way, there's no way one in four of us have a neurochemical problem in our brains. No way. One in four of us don't have lupus. One in four of us don't have epilepsy. One in four of us don't have uh, ADHD. One in four of us don't, no, 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 no way. What's, what's happening here? What's happening is we're not understanding as modern Americans how to deal with anxieties or our burdens. We're not learning how to deal with it. And instead, we're medicating it. And when you can find somebody who wants to make money off of giving you drugs and giving you a very easy out, you're gonna find a runaway train industry. And that's what's happening today. Again, no judgment for those of us who need medication. And I don't want anybody, in fact, this is such a, this is such a sensitive topic that People like me don't want to talk about it because the fear is folks who actually need the medication are going to say, yeah, that's right, I'm going to go without it. And I'm not your doctor. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not. So I, I want to be really careful say, you got to figure with a professional what is right for you. I'm just going to talk holistically and say, friends, friends, there's something wrong in our culture when we can't handle stress and we can't handle anxiety. Why can't we handle stress and anxiety in our culture? Uh, there's a whole bunch of reasons for it. Maybe we're softer than Americans used to be. That's a real possibility. Maybe the way 
culture operates is not the way that God has wired our bodies and our minds to operate. There's a lot of people who would say, we're not wired for mass industrialization. A lot of people would say that we're not wired for technology that we have right now, that we need a much slower agrarian pace the way that all human beings have had instead of here in the Western developed world for the last 100 years. I mean, that, that, that might be an idea. I think another idea that it comes directly out of this verse is that when we have an anxiety, when we have a fear, we turn to God and we cast it on Him. <laughs> we give it to Him. And as we as a people are becoming less religious, less spiritual, less God-oriented, less Christian, we have nowhere to cast our burdens. We have nowhere to cast our anxieties. We just hold on to them. Hey, it just makes sense. If you're a random amalgamation of proteins and there was a big bang that God had nothing to do with because there is no God, and this you and then the end of your life, if that's what you believe, which is increasingly what we are teaching one another, then you are alone. You are so very alone and you damn well be right that you should be stressed because you got no backstop at all. You have every right to be stressed because it's all on you. When I meet somebody who is perpetually stressed and anxious, I'm meeting somebody who has a spiritual problem. It's not an emotional problem. It's a spiritual problem. The problem of believing that I'm in control of my life. The problem of believing that everything rises and falls on my efforts. The problem is that I am God, even if I've been baptized, even if I read the Bible every once in a while, when there is stress and anxiety, it comes from somebody believing they are God and they are in control. That's why this verse says, cast it on to Jesus. Cast it on to Jesus. What does that mean? It means there's certain stresses you just have to allow to fall right off of you. I lead a church right now and we've got just a lot of problems in the church. We've got a lot of people who have just a lot of stresses and psychological stuff. We've got a lot of staff members in the midst of post-COVID who are leaving and going on to other jobs. There's just, just a lot of stuff. And when you hear the problems that people are wrestling with, uh, and I've been counseling folks with this, like, hey, when someone's not happy, when they're upset, you, you've got to learn certain blocking mechanisms. You can't carry it with you. You can't take everyone's stress, everyone's unhappiness on top. You've got to learn blocking mechanisms where you can be engaged, be empathetic, and then at the end of the conversation, like you're able to check out. You don't own that stuff. My most important blocking mechanism that I have, when I say blocking, I don't mean I'm ignoring, I'm ignoring you. I mean, I'm blocking this from having an adverse negative effect on the rest of my day. Because I get more prayer, I get more prayer concerns over heavy, heavy stuff than anybody here does, multiples. I'm, I'm getting peppered all day with instant, uh, Instagram direct messages and emails. I just found this out, would you pray for me? And you can always do it for me, I'm honored to do that. But the only way I can function is to have a blocking mechanism to say, I can't, I can't own all these, I will pray for it. I feel for you in the moment, but I have a blocking message, me mechanism that keeps me from being weighed down. And what's my blocking mechanism? It's this verse, this verse. This is God's child more than it's my child. God feels this more than I feel this. God has in control of this and I and this person can't control. I have to cast my burdens on him. The reason why we keep going to drugs so easily is we're not willing to do the spiritual formation of casting our burdens onto Jesus. We're not willing to, to do the hard work of saying, I'm really self-centered, aren't I? I'm looking inside, I'm all about myself, instead of getting to a place spiritually where I'm able to throw my stuff onto God, not being self-centered, but being God-centered and get myself under Him. And it's harder to ask questions like, why am I so driven? It's harder to do that than it is to take a pill. It's harder to ask questions like, am I a control freak? Do, am, do I, am I, a control freak, and I'm realizing I can't control everything, so that's why I'm anxious. Is that the issue? When well, we won't find out because it's much easier to take a pill. Or, I mean, one more example. Going back and looking at the trauma in our life, a way we were abused, a way we were hurt, a way we were abandoned, that is a very difficult and arduous process, much easier, much quicker 
to just take the edge off with the pill. Sometimes we short circuit spiritual formation. We short circuit the process of depending on God, which is what God wants. He wants us to depend on him, to lean on him. And that's what happens when we cast our burdens, when we cast our anxieties on. I think about my anxiety. My anxiety is only a problem so long as I cling to it and dwell on it. But actually, if my anxiety is causing me to go, God, I need you to take this from me. God, I'm feeling this way. Would you take this from me? I trust in you to make this okay. I want to trust in you that I will trust in you. When we trust and we lean into him, we end up spiritually growing and we end up decreasing in our anxiety. This is the path God wants for you. And it's the aggressive path. The passive path will always be to do something quick and easy and simple that numbs you out right now. But you never get anywhere. You, ne you, never, you never go to a new place. You, you never develop. You're just kind of making this moment a little more comfortable and God wants more for you on that. He wants you to cast your anxieties onto him. Why? Because he cares for you. Not just because you want a better life, but because he cares for you. God, I, I, uh, I pray for a release for everyone who is with me in the garage today, a release of anxiety, not just because you may magically lift it from us, and I pray that does happen, but because we learn to lean into you and we want to choose to do that and go after you this day. In your name I pray, Jesus. Amen. Well, that's it. We'll see you next time on My Garage Bible Study.